How many stocks should you own in your investment portfolio? The answer to this question largely depends, in my opinion, on your general investing strategy, your tolerance for volatility, and your time commitment when investing. So in this video, I will be exploring all these topics and sharing my ideas on how many stocks you should own based on your general investing strategy, your volatility tolerance, and your time commitment. And we'll also be touching on diversification towards the end of the video and how I think about that. So first, let's talk about your general investing strategy. By this, I mean what type of securities you invest in. For example, if you largely invest in ETFs or mutual funds, you probably only need a few holdings in your portfolio to be fully diversified and uh, just to have enough holdings in the portfolio. And depending on your volatility tolerance, which we'll talk about a little bit later, even just one index fund would probably be good enough because through that index fund, you will own hundreds of companies and that's gonna give you a lot of diversification. For me personally, most of my investments are actually in index funds and about half of those are in S&P 500 index funds, like for example, VOO. And then about the other half are in just total stock market index funds like VTI. Uh, these funds are pretty similar, but for me, it's just a personal preference to own both. You'd probably be perfectly fine just owning one of them. And I also do hold a small portion of my index fund portfolio in sort of a small to mid cap index fund, but that's not really all that necessary either in my opinion. Now, when we get to investing in individual stocks, things get a little bit trickier in my opinion. And this is where we start to explore the volatility tolerance and time commitment components. I want to clarify that I view risk and volatility as different things, so I want to be precise with my wording. Risk is essentially the chance that you will permanently lose a certain amount of the capital that you invest, while volatility is more so just a measure of the magnitude of the movements of the stock price. So to put it another way, I would say that risk is more associated with the performance of the underlying company over the long term, while volatility is more associated with the performance of the stock price in a shorter time frame. Essentially, what I mean by volatility tolerance is how far would your stock portfolio have to drop before you get worried and consider selling some of your positions? And if the answer to that question is anything less than 30%, well, you probably shouldn't be investing in the stock market at all because the overall market is definitely going to drop 30% or more. Um, in the vast majority of 10 year periods and ultimately volatility tolerance is really just a test of your emotional strength. If you think you would be comfortable with your portfolios dropping say 50 or 75 percent as long as nothing with the underlying companies has changed for the worse then it would probably be okay to just own a few companies maybe only two or three or five or ten but if you think you wouldn't want to see your portfolio drop that far then maybe you would consider owning more like 20 or 30 companies but in my opinion anything over 30 is probably too many for the vast majority of you know retail or part-time investors because of the time commitment component which we'll discuss next how much time you want to commit to your investments is a big factor as well in my opinion you should generally be keeping up with all your investments looking at their financials and recent operating results every six months to a year or so. So if you own 100 companies, for example, that's gonna be a lot of work and most retail or part-time investors probably don't have the time or energy for that. And another important point is that before you even purchase these companies, you're probably going to be doing fairly extensive research on each one. So if you have to do that for 100 companies, for example, that's gonna take a lot more time than if you only do that for 10 or 20 or 30 companies. And if there was someone that did own 100 companies, for example, I would probably guess that they most likely didn't do quite enough research upfront before they did purchase the companies and adding to that fact is that when you do do research and decide which companies to invest in and which not to uh, you probably come up with a lot of companies that you do some level of research on that you decide no I don't want to invest in that so you know if you research a hundred companies and invest in all those you probably ended up researching you know 200 companies in total and just a hundred of those you actually discarded and didn't end up investing in at all so so it's even more of a time commitment there. And this discussion of your time commitment when researching companies basically leads us back to the topic of volatility tolerance that we discussed earlier, because the better you research and understand your companies before you invest in them, the more tolerance you'll likely have for the volatility when your portfolio inevitably falls 10, 20, or 30% at some point in time, because you are 
that much more knowledgeable and confident in those investments that you made. So let's try to link this all together. If you're investing in mutual funds, ETFs, index funds, you probably only need a few holdings in your portfolio, maybe one, two, or three. And you could argue you need up to 10 maybe, but anything over that is probably unnecessary. Um, if you're investing in individual stocks, the more you research and understand a company before you buy its stock, ultimately the fewer stocks you need to own many great investors invest the vast majority of their wealth in only five or ten stocks sometimes fewer because they really truly understand these businesses and have strong conviction in the future success of the business and they really aren't worried if the stock price changes erratically in a way that isn't correlated with the performance of the business in the short term if you don't want to spend as much time upfront researching and understanding each individual company then maybe 10 or 20 or even 30 stocks would be a good number for you but in my opinion anything over around 30 is just too many stocks to keep up with on their financial results like many things most of the vital work in investing is done in the planning and research phase so if you can put in that time up front then you can just buy a small selection of stocks and reevaluate them every six months to a year as warren buffett says most of the action in investing is just thumb sucking meaning you just sit around and do research and uh, wait for the right opportunities and you aren't you know being super active in terms of trading and buying and selling all the time when most people talk about how many stocks you should own they talk a lot about diversification and i haven't really mentioned that all that much in this video because i really don't think it's all that important yes it's probably not the best idea for most investors to put you know all their capital into just one or two stocks because you know unexpected things do happen and if something like that does happen to one of your companies then it could dramatically hurt your portfolio in the long term but you can certainly have a diversified portfolio of five to ten stocks if you own stocks in different sectors and industries and stocks that are affected by different economic factors but if you do the research and planning part of investing properly as i said before you won't really need to be all that diversified because you'll be investing in companies that you're knowledgeable about and confident in and everyone certainly makes mistakes um, even if you are super confident in a company they might falter and not perform as you expected but but that's why owning just one or two stocks probably isn't the best idea but you know more like five or ten stocks is certainly not too few for many investors if they are doing it correctly although I certainly don't take it to this extreme nor would I suggest that most investors do Andrew Carnegie once said to put all your eggs in one basket and then watch that basket and that sort of sums up my thoughts in general on diversification and just for transparency to talk about my personal portfolio the vast majority of my investments are in the two index funds that I mentioned earlier VOO and VTI I also do have a small dividend portfolio that has 20 companies in it and then I manage a dividend portfolio for my brother and that portfolio has 19 companies so that 20 number is a pretty good spot for me but even there oftentimes I feel like that is too many companies for me and I get a little bit overwhelmed uh, with that number so ultimately I could see myself uh, you know consolidating over time and reducing that number to more like 10 or 15 but I think that would certainly take a few years for that to fully play out so if you think the ideas in this video were helpful make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos about the stock market and investing and also let me know down in the comments how many companies you do own in your investment portfolios and what your rationale is for owning that number if you have any questions i'll try my best to answer them in the comments below thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one